Welcome to this 15 minute yoga flow for tight hip flexors and improved flexibility. You won't need any equipment for this practice, just yourself and a mat or a comfortable surface beneath you. When you're ready, we'll get started in child's pose. Starting in child's pose, your hips are sinking back towards your heels. Your knees are splayed slightly wider than your hips allowing the belly to sink towards the mat. Arms are extended in front of you, palms down. Perhaps the forehead is resting on the mat. Just taking a few moments to settle into the body. Arrive in this moment, accepting any sensations that may arise, tuning into the breath, perhaps setting an intention for today acknowledging your efforts for showing up on the mat, taking the time to look after your physical and mental health. From here, transitioning up into a tabletop position, slowly guiding your hips up, taking a moment to settle in, roll the shoulders back, knees are in line with hips, wrists are in line with shoulders, and the hips are square to the front of the mat. We're going to tent up onto our fingertips, engage the core, drawing the navel to the spine as we lift our right knee and gently guide our right foot between our two hands, taking a moment to square the hips towards the front of the mat, coming into a low supported lunge, a variation of Anjayasana, working on lengthening through the crown of the head, elongating the spine, ensuring the knee and the ankle are in line and the front knee is tracking over the, in line with our second toe. There is activation between the two thighs, scissoring together. The leg is not splaying out to the side. One more breath. And from here, we're going to plant our left palm onto the mat as we inhale and rotate our chest towards the right side of the room, extending our right arm skywards, perhaps gazing over that right shoulder. You might like to look up at the arm, really working on breathing into the side ribs, ensuring that that front knee, the knee that is bent, is staying engaged and the leg is activated towards the midline. We're not splaying out to the side. One more breath. And from here, we will gently float our right arm back to frame the front foot. And we will come into a revolved twist low lunge, joining our hands together in Namaskar Mudra. We'll place the left arm on the outer region of the right thigh. And again, you might like to gaze over that right shoulder or perhaps close the eyes, playing around with balance. Two more breaths. From here, we will transition our weight back to the midline as we frame our front foot and we're going to transition into another variation of Anjayasana, stretching the quadriceps of the left leg. So bending, flexing that knee, keeping the foot flexed, reaching around with the right arm for the top of the left foot. For a deeper stretch, you might like to grab a hold of the inner seam of that left foot and rotate the shoulders towards the front of the mat as you draw your chin towards your chest really working on lengthening through the quadricep muscle, the hip flexors, flowing with the breath. Now we will gently float that left leg back down onto the mat as we frame our front foot and plant our palms down onto the mat as we tuck the back toe and join our right leg to meet our back leg in high plank, ensuring that the shoulders are rolled back and down, wrists are in line with shoulders, palms, fingertips, knuckles are engaged. Navel is drawing towards the spine, glutes are activated. Inhale, drop the knees. Exhale, drop the chin, the chest towards the mat. Inhale, come up into cobra. Really working on lengthening through the spine, broadening across the collarbones, the chest. And exhale back down. Push back into child's pose, sinking the hips towards the heels. We'll just be here for a moment to collect the breath, realign with our inner guidance system, 
feeling the benefits of the stretches we've just done, allowing yourself to sink into this moment, letting go of any tension that might have built up, whether it be mental tension, thoughts, images, or physical tension in the body. Seeing if you can let it go with every breath, perhaps deepening the breath as you go. When you're ready, slowly transitioning into Bhamanasana tabletop position, we will go on the left side. So hands underneath shoulders, tenting up onto our fingertips, engaging the core as we lift our left knee, gently placing that left foot in between our two hands, taking a moment to wiggle around, square off the hips, finding a comfortable variation of low lunge ensuring that the front knee, the left knee that is bent, is in line with the ankle and tracking in line with the second toe. Working on broadening across the collarbones, across the chest, perhaps closing the eyes, melting into the posture, feeling the lovely stretch along the right leg, the right hip flexors. When you're ready, we'll plant the right palm down onto the floor as we inhale and extend the left arm skywards rotating the chest towards the left side of the room breathing into that left rib cage expanding across the chest ensuring that those hips stay square to the front of the mat perhaps feeling a deeper variation of the stretch on the right hand side you might like to gaze up at those fingertips or keep your neck neutral or maybe look down at the ground whatever serves you exhale frame the front foot and we'll come into a Namaskar Mudra variation of the Anjayasana lunge, joining the hands together at heart center. The outer edge of the right arm is on the outer edge of the left thigh. You might like to gaze over that left elbow, the left shoulder, perhaps look down at the floor or keep your eyes closed. Being mindful of the distribution of weight on that front left foot are you grounding down through the heel, through the ball of the feet, using the toes for support? And gently framing the front foot again. This time we will inhale as we whirl our left arm around to catch our right foot. Ensuring that the hips stay squared. Foot is flexed to protect the muscles and the joints. You might like to find a deeper variation of the stretch, grabbing onto the inner seam of that right foot squaring the shoulders to the front of the mat and drawing the chin down towards the chest, really finding a deep stretch along that right quadricep muscle. This is a fantastic stretch for runners. If we have any runners who are joining us today, one more breath and gently floating that leg back down, placing the palms on the ground as we step our left leg back to meet our right in a high plank, finding that engagement, crown of the head is drawing you forward as the heels of the feet draw you backwards creating a nice linear line legs are engaged outer hips inner thighs glutes abdominal muscles arms neck is long relax the muscles of the face inhale drop the knees to the floor exhale drop the chin and the chest untuck the back toes inhale come up into cobra working on grazing those arms against the body elongating through the spine the glutes are relaxed we're not clenching into the buttocks we want to ensure that we're protecting the lumbar and sacral regions of the spine exhale down and push back into child's pose sinking those hips back melting the heart the chest the belly onto the floor perhaps resting the forehead on the mat you might like to extend the arms out in front Gently coming up into a tabletop position, moving the hands forward a couple inches as we tuck the back toes under and transition into Ardha Mukha Svanasana. This is our downward facing dog. Navel is drawing towards the spine, heels are drawing towards the back of the mat. Palms, fingertips, and knuckles are grounded. You might like to walk out the dog, finding a deep stretch along the calf muscles, warming up those legs. 
Inhale, floating the right leg up towards the ceiling, toes are pointed towards the mat, heel is flexed. Now pointing the toe, externally rotating the hip, flexing at the knee, drawing the heel towards the left glute. We'll find two circles with the right hip, the right knee. And when you're ready, going back the other way, lifting up onto the toes of the left foot, we will gently guide our right foot to the outer edge of our right hand, coming into our lizard lunge. Taking a moment to square the hips, finding a position that's conducive with balance and support. Perhaps dropping down onto the forearms for a deeper stretch. Dropping down onto the knee if it's in your practice. Untucking the back toes. Maybe splaying the right knee out to the side. Coming onto the lateral edge of the right foot. Whatever works. Staying within your comfort zone. But still trying to find that edge. One more breath. Slowly working our way back up onto our hands. Walking that front right knee in between both hands, stepping back into our high plank, finding that activation, finding length, stability, breathing through any tension. One more breath, inhale, drop the knees to the mat, exhale, drop the chin, the chest, untuck the back toes, inhale as we lift up into Bhujangasana Cobra. Staying here for a moment and exhale back down onto the mat, pushing back into child's pose, taking a moment to observe any sensations, accepting the moment for what it is. Coming up into tabletop, we will transition back into our downward facing dog, tucking the toes, moving the hands a little bit out in front lifting those hips high, perhaps walking out the dog, finding stillness, movement, whatever works. And here we will inhale, float the left leg up, heel, foot is flexed, and we will point our left toes as we externally rotate our left hips, flex at the knee, drawing the left hip towards the right buttocks, and gently draw some circles one way and the other. When you're ready, floating up onto the right toes as we gently guide our left foot down to the edge of our left mat, outside our left fingers, coming into our lizard lunge, maybe wiggling back and forth to find some space. If it's in your practice, coming down onto forearms. You might like to drop the knee, untuck the toes, splaying the left knee out to the side, resting on the lateral edge, the outer edge of that left foot. You might like to use your left hand and press out the thigh for a deeper stretch. Whatever works, finding that edge. One more breath and we will press up back into our variation of lizard lunge, tucking the back toes, walking the left foot between both arms, stepping back into a high plank. Ensuring core is engaged, navel is drawing towards the spine. Heels are drawing you backwards as the crown of the head draws you forwards. Shoulders are rolled back in line with wrists. And we'll slowly come down for a count of 10. Squeezing those arms towards the midline. Hovering just above the floor. You've got this. Remember to breathe and gently lowering down all the way and this time we'll transition into a sphinx pose resting on the forearms shoulders are in line with elbows lengthening through the crown of the head we're drawing up through the spine you might like to gaze over both shoulders just to ensure that the legs are straight behind you and working on drawing the arms towards the back of the room so that you're not slouching down into the posture. One more breath and in a way that is comfortable for you we will press up transitioning through a tabletop and bringing our knees forward coming down to onto our sits bones we are going to roll down onto our back. One vertebra at a time you might like to use the back of the legs for support 
And when you're ready, drawing circles with the knees, drawing the knees towards the chest. Or you might like to find stillness here. Now we'll extend our left leg as we interlace our fingers around our right shin, ensuring that the left leg, the knee that's extended, is facing towards the ceiling, the foot is flexed, heel is grounding you down. You might like to find some ankle rotations, circling the foot one way and the other. And we'll go on the other side, wind relieving pose on the left, interlacing our fingers around our left shin, maybe rolling that left foot out one way and the other, grounding down through that right leg. Really squeezing that left knee towards the left armpit. And from here we'll bring both knees towards our chest and exhale, slowly come down into Shavasana, corpse pose for final relaxation. I invite you to pause the video here and stay in Shavasana for 5, 10, 15 minutes if you have it. Otherwise, take a moment to relax into the body. Tune into the rise and fall of the belly. Perhaps noticing the heartbeat. Any temperature differences, sensations in the body. Acknowledging your efforts for today and all of the hard work you have put into your practice. When you're ready, you might like to wiggle the toes, move the fingers, roll the neck from side to side to release any tension that's built up under the neck. Extend the arms above you and stretch in either direction. And when you're ready, bending the knees, placing the soles of the feet down and rolling onto the right hand side of the mat. Perhaps using your right arm as a pillow, your left arm for support. Keeping the eyes closed, or transition into Sukhasana or any seated variation that is comfortable for you. Inhale, extend the arms overhead, joining the palms together. Exhale, lower them to heart center. And we'll take three cleansing breaths to close practice. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Thank you so much for joining us. Namaste.